This is kind of a remake of my other muting video where the sound came and went. So I've got a selection of rubber mutes here and even one felt mute. If you notice, I've rounded off all of them. The squared off mute that you get from the supply houses makes it hard to get in if you've got a three string to get in between or even in between the three strings. You know, there's a pattern of three, a space three. It's always easier to go between. Sometimes these are really narrow. Um, the motion you use rather than just pushing it in, if, I, if you put your finger along here and kind of slide it into space, or even with a narrower one, it helps to hold the mute in place. It helps to, to be able to, with a rounded edge, to slide it between the strings without it catching on the tips. I've got some bent wires, I've got some tails on these to help um, keep it from falling in between the action and the strings on an upright. We even have a PAPS mute here, which we don't see in America too often. Um, it's mostly used for upright pianos and over damper pianos where you'll, instead of going behind the, behind the hammers, you actually go through the hammer shanks to mute between because the dampers will be in the way. Uh, also usable for player pianos. So let's go on over to a piano and we'll take a look at some options because this is what this is all about. Providing you some options for based on your manual dexterity, based on your visual acuity, um, how to deal with one string at a time, to deal with two strings at a time, to deal with all three strings at a time. You know, if, if we're going to take this note here, the simplest way is a single mute. We're going to place it between, let's zoom in on this a little bit. So I've got it between the right and the center string. I can then tune the left string. Now when I move the mute, so let's use my other hand here, simple movement. Okay, you can even do it by sound alone. You can hear it slide between. Now I'm between the spaces. Now I've got two strings singing together. I can then tune them to get that unison. Then when I move again, I'm going to move all the way across. Click, click to put it in place on the next string. Then I can tune the other. So then we have one unison complete. Again, it's one click to get to the big space. Let's see if I do this righty, because that's how I usually do it. And then we're going to slide across to do here, and then here. And you get a couple a couple strings tuned for free with without having to move the mute all the time. A key consideration for this one is that you never physically touch a string with a mute after it's tuned. We're tuning from left to right, so we get the left string tuned. Center to the left, right to the other two. And you never ever touch a string with a mute after it's been tuned. Downside of this is that you have the confusion for some people of tuning that third string to the first two. Now I've got some shortened handled mutes that I use for grand pianos here just because I don't need the extra length. Um, so now I know some people would like to, to tune the center string first. So here we have a situation and many times I'll use a big wedge mute or a big uh, felt mute because it really damps well. So then this way is a duple tuning. You're going to tune center string. Now if I move the right one first, now I've got the right and the center to tune. And then if I move the next mute over, I will tune the left with the center. And then when I unmute them, I can just listen to see whether I like that. So this way there's more mute moving, but you tune center. Next string would be tune the center, move the right mute, tune the right to the center, move the left mute. 
Okay. Now there's sometimes speed considerations if you want to move through this quickly. There's what's called a split mute, which is a single mute, rubber mute, that's been cut down the middle. And again, this allows you to mute the outer edges, leaving the center string singing alone. Uh, now this creates a certain pattern that we're going to follow. Center string, move the mute. Now we can move, tune the left to the center. Go ahead, tune the next string. Move the mute. Now we go back to this first unison, tune the right string, which is our C. Move up C sharp, tune the left string to the center. Move up to D, tune the center string. Now we're going to move the mute. Now we're going to have to go back down to our C sharp, tune the right string, which we haven't gotten yet. The D, the left string. pattern works its way entirely across the keyboard with some little adjustments at the struts where you have to do that. Um, let's go over to an upright piano. And here's where I wanted to show you this, this bent mute, why I bent the wire um, and have this tail on it. I can reach behind. Now the mute is sitting on top of the damper. It's still allowing me to sound the note, but the wire is laying on top of the hammers, leaving this tail out in front so if the mute does drop it has a chance to grab on the hammers there. Hopefully I don't drop it, but it seems to always happen. Now this is the same area that we may want to, some people may want to use a PAPS mute, which is coming in from under the hammer see down in there. Coming in from under the hammer and muting between the strings there, leaving the center string to to vibrate. And then again you have to you have to work it between the hammers in such a way that you can allow the hammer to still move and get in there. And it allows you a couple different muting options. The tweezer action squeezes out so you can move between the hammers as you need and it's surprising this hard plastic, this kind of nylon actually does mute the string um, even though you'd think you'd need something soft to make the muting action and again it's not used from above like a traditional mute so much as underneath between the hammer shanks to allow you in the over damper piano that is covered up here or a player action piano to reach underneath. And again back here at the grand piano, um, it's important to realize that all mutes will get shiny with age, the rubber mutes, and they'll reach a point where where you're hitting they'll, they'll want to fall over because they're not grabbing between the strings anymore. I mean, they're inexpensive enough that you can buy them a bunch or buy a few every you know six months or a year to replace those, keep them um, fresh enough so that they will hold on to the string. Um, again, to review, between the strings is the easiest way to place them, but it also means moving the mutes more. Between the narrow part of the strings allows you to go left to right or right to left if you're working your way down from the treble. Sometimes that's an option that you'll want to move along. This way, again, it's just a matter of what's your manual dexterity, what's your visual acuity, allows you to do and it's it's good to have a couple different options because each piano presents you with different problems different opportunities that you may need to come up with creative solutions to allow you to hear what you need to hear and to address the different options that that piano presents whether you're muting multiple mutes across the piano to hear for intervals or whether you're just following across um, to go the quickest way you can for a pitch raise, say. 
Um, even one of the other videos I showed where you can do a muteless pit trays, but that's um, outside the realm of what we're doing.